out of the harbor town, cold November day. The Carl D. Bradley was a 639-foot-long self-unloading ore carrier that sunk on November 18, 1958, with a large loss of 33 out of 35 crew members. Her sinking at the time was quite different, splitting into two on Lake Michigan in a November gale. Now let's look at, at the Bradley sinking at a more detailed look. The Carl D. Bradley was launched on April 9, 1927, and later that year was christened on July 28, 1927, and had her maiden voyage on that same day. She measured in 639 feet long, 65 feet wide, and a depth of 30 feet. At the time of her christening, she was the queen of the lakes and would unexpectedly hold that title for 22 years when it was beat by the Wilford Sykes. She's the second with the ships that held the queen of the lakes title over a long period of time, with the first place being the 1,013-foot-long Paul Archigertha, holding the title for more 40 years. Anyways, now that you know the ship statistics, let's fast forward to November 17, 1958, one day before the Bradley would go down. Bradley blew her whistle low, sailed out of the bay. No one there to say goodbye, she begged for me to stay. Joanna, I'm sorry. Joanna, made you cry. The 1958 shipping season was a very slow one, and actually most lake freighters never even made it out of layup. But for the first time in a while, the Carl D. Bradley was finally let out of layup, but the company was not satisfied with the results of this season, so they asked one more transport out of the Bradley and her crew. Also, it was most likely going to come out with an end-year signing bonus, so the Bradley's crew accepted for one more trip. But if we rewind a lot to the Carl D. Bradley career, she was noticeably in bad conditioning because the ship had been through so many groundings and collisions. The Bradley was scheduled to get a layup later in November and get her fixed. But many people say that if the Bradley had gotten the repairs earlier, it might have just been able to prevent the whole disaster itself. Anyways, let's get back into November 17, 1958. The Carl D. Bradley was departing from Buffington, Indiana with a load of stone upbound for the port of Calcite in Michigan. At this time, there was a possible November gale forming in Lake Michigan, and all the lake freighter captains were just being warned about these dangerous gales. Just 45 years earlier, the storm of 1913 took place and wiped out more than 12 ships with a loss of more than 280 sailors. Many people back then would compare their modern storms to this one. Sail down through Lake Michigan, the sun was setting low. Bound for Indiana, a cargo of stone. When we reach the harbor there, and my watch. Captains were waiting for the gale to pass by Lake Michigan, but little did the crew of the Bradley know they wouldn't be in their homes in the end, except for the two men, first mate Frank Mays and deck watchman Elmer Fleming, and would actually make it out of the November Witch. But we're not there yet. While in the storm, Elmer Fleming checked out the tunnels inside the Bradley. Nothing I'd seen out of the ordinary, so we went back up to deck. After a few hours, they had been fighting strong in the storm, and all of a sudden, a loud crashing noise was heard from the Bradley. All the men were confused, but they had little to no time to react because the Bradley had just split. She was taken down water rapidly, four men including Frank Mays, Elmer Fleming, Gary Skrletsky, and Dennis Meredith. If I pronounce that wrong, I'm sorry. Anyways, these men got onto the raft. Frank Mays had to run back to his cabin to get his life jacket before they had gotten on the raft, which had taken him some time. The men were being absolutely thrown by the fury of the waves. Eventually, the stern of the Bradley was somewhat vertical. The funnel contacted with Lake Michigan and the waters were really cold that night. It had started a very big explosion because the super hot boiler of the Bradley touching the super cold waters of the lake. The explosion could be seen for miles and actually was seen by the vessel of the Christine Sartori. 
A mayday had been called by the Bradley just earlier when the ship first split. Many Coast Guard stations had heard the SOS and were preparing for the Coast Guard ships. Four men were still fighting in the storm with their life raft. The sea anchor had failed miserably. Gary Skurletsky, after a while, was starting to give up, and eventually, unfortunately, his body was. That's one down out of four. Dennis Meredith thought of something. He was a swimmer in high school and thought he could swim to shore to get help. Frank Mays and Elmer Fleming pleased of the man to not do it because there was no stopping him. He got off and there was never seen again. That's now two down of the four men. The men saw the Christine Sartori ship and tried to launch a flare, but it was wet and they wouldn't launch. So the men just waved and screamed for the ship to hear them, but they couldn't. Many ships in the area were in the search, like the Bradley, or really any survivors. Ships like the John G. Munson and a couple of others. In the end of the storm, Frank Mays and Elmer Fleming made it out alive. Two others didn't. Gary Skrletsky was found alive, but th- by the time they got a doctor, he gave up. I never took the time to say goodbye I drift out on this lifeboat The aftermath of the Bradley sinking hit hard on the communities of the Great Lakes, but the city hit hard most was Roger City of Michigan. 20 out of the 35 men were from there. The shipwreck had hit national news due to its large loss of life. Frank Mays and Elmer Fleming's testimonies had stated that the Bradley had split in two, but nobody believed that that was a thing because they were just in shock. Elmer Fleming went to work on another ship, being the captain of the Cedarville, while Frank Mays never went to work on a ship again. Elmer Fleming died in 1969, 11 years after the Bradley, leaving Frank Mays as the sole survivor of the Bradley. Frank would go on to live a long life, being so close to death at a young age. Frank Mays unfortunately died in 2021, leaving zero people left of the Bradley. Frank Mays was said to have enjoyed moments of his life in such a traveler. Earlier in 1995, Frank Mays and the professional diver went to the Bradley Slack to see it again and the 33 men that it took down. They could barely see anything and were afraid to hit the boom of the Bradley. Two years later, they would return to it to clearly see the Bradley this time. And there was a split right in front of their eyes. After all this time, Frank Mays was right about the bow section, which was 90 feet apart from the stern. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. This whole video was inspired by Maritime Horror's video of the Carl D. Bradley. Go check out that video because it was a more detailed look of this. Anyways, like and subscribe and have a good day or night, depending on what time you're watching this. Bye.